This is Wrestling's Greatest Moments. Hey now, wrestling fans. It's time for another episode of Wrestling's Greatest Moments. Paul Vachon was a mighty man of many talents. The grappler nicknamed Mad Dog was a wrestler, promoter, as well as a member of the legendary Vachon family. Sit back as Wrestling's Greatest Moments looks at the life of Paul the Butcher Vachon. Before we get started, though, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss a single video. Paul Vachon was born on October 7th, 1937, outside of Montreal, Quebec. He was the seventh of 12 children. His brother Maurice would be the first family member to join the grappling game, and Maurice's success led to him wanting his brother Paul to get involved. When Paul told Maurice of his accomplishments as an amateur wrestler, Maurice supposedly told him, That's enough amateur stuff. You're never going to make money wrestling amateur. You're going to turn pro. The future butcher began competing at age 17, working as Maurice's manager. Paul became as hated as Maurice, who was already developing a reputation as a maniacal opponent, and he eventually joined him in the ring. According to the butcher, his first match was in Ontario, where a fan walloped him with a 2x4. Like any good brother, Maurice shared his experience with his younger brother, telling him never turn your back on a wrestling fan. While Paul would become legendary as the Butcher, he worked another identity during his early years in the business. According to historian Greg Oliver, another early territory on his own was around Detroit, Windsor, where Paul was known as Nikita Zolotov. Elsewhere, he was sometimes Nikolai Zolotov and various other spellings. Paul worked in the area at the recommendation of his brother Maurice, who had also worked there early on in his career. A brutal band of brothers, Thus began one of wrestling's most feared brother tag teams. The two earned a reputation as one of wrestling's most dangerous teams and repeatedly cemented their reputation through various acts of brutality against their opponents. Paul and Maurice made an interesting pair. Paul stood six foot four inches while Maurice was five foot seven inches tall. However, what Maurice lacked in height, he made up with in ferocity. His nickname Mad Dog applied to his antics in and out of the ring, whether it was his willingness to blade or his penchant for brawls outside the ring. That's not to say that the Butcher was a choir boy. Far from it. Both brothers had their share of scraps, and during the days of kayfabe, it was common to deal with surly fans looking to get revenge on the Vachons for beating up their favorite baby faces. The Vachons had plenty of competition, including several teams of brothers such as the Scott brothers, the Torres brothers, and the Leduc brothers. Other opponents included the Crusher and the Bruiser, as well as the team of Billy Red Lions and Red Bastion. Maurice played an instrumental role in his brother's career, not only helping him break into the business, but helping him land other opportunities. One such opportunity led to a multi-year international tour. What was supposed to be a short run in Australia turned into a campaign that lasted from 1962 to 1966. As the Butcher remembers, the contract I signed called for me to be in Australia for two months in 1961, recalled Paul. I came back in 1966. From Australia, I went to New Zealand, Pakistan, India, Africa, and Asia. I really enjoyed my stay. During that time span, I wrestled in 33 different countries. In India, Vashan wrestled legendary grappler Dara Singh and even appeared in some of Singh's movies. Answer, Vashan. Wrestling has seen many real-life and kayfabe brothers. For example, Maurice and Paul Vachon battled real-life brothers George and Sandy Scott. Later, Mad Dog and the Butcher would team up with Stan Vachon to battle real-life brothers Enrique, Alberto, and Ramon Torres. However, Stan Vachon was actually Eric Pomeroy, who had previously been working as Stan Pulaski. The Butcher was invited to work in Georgia. Booker Leo Garibaldi was bringing in the Torres brothers, and he hoped to get a Vachon to back up the Butcher. Maurice was busy in the AWA, but he and Paul agreed to let Pomeroy portray Stan Vachon. Paul and Stan worked in Georgia from 1966 to 1968, capturing three different titles in the territory. It's NWA Southern Tag Team Championship, the NWA Georgia Tag Team Championship, and the NWA World Tag Team Championship, the Georgia version. Garibaldi hit the jackpot when he brought Maurice in for a few weeks, thanks to promoter Vern Gagne letting Mad Dog take some time off from the AWA. Fans got to see the Vachans battle the Torres brothers. As Maurice Mad Dog Vachon recalls, we had a run with the Torres brothers, and they called it the Battle of the Century in Atlanta, Mad Dog said. There were so many people. 
It took me an hour to get into the building. Thousands and thousands of people. Hey, Butcher, can you let me in? I couldn't get in. Breaking the bank in the AWA. The Vachans enjoyed incredible success in the AWA, including a lengthy run with its World Tag Team Championship. As historian Pat LaProd writes, in 1969, Paul and Maurice were so popular that they were part of the top 10 wrestlers and teams who drew the biggest crowds in the world. Their wars with Dick the Bruiser and the Crusher were some of wrestling's biggest box office attractions. For example, on one occasion, their main event match helped set a new box office record in North America. In 1970, 21,000 fans attended in Comiskey Park to watch the Butcher and the Mad Dog wrestle Dick the Bruiser and the Crusher in a steel cage match. The gate brought in $148,000, a new record in the United States. However, a huge opportunity opened for the Vachans, and while it was risky, they left the AWA to make a momentous gamble. Promoting in Quebec Maurice and Paul were making money hand over fist when they were invited back to Quebec. Maurice was offered a partnership in a prospective promotion known as Grand Prix Wrestling. Maurice, who wanted his brother to stop drinking alcohol, wooed him by offering half of his stake in the promotion. As things turned out, Paul was able to acquire his own interest when another partner withdrew. Thankfully, he also stopped drinking. Grand Prix Wrestling became successful in the 1970s, with a feud between the Vachans and the LaDuke brothers bringing in many fans. Paul showed skill as a booker and was ahead of his time in several areas. One was in the area of TV production. Unlike other promotions, Paul had Grand Prix pay the cost of production, which meant that the promotion owned the various wrestling shows. He then offered them the TV stations for free in exchange for a few commercials. This allowed Grand Prix to reach markets far outside its home base in Montreal. While Grand Prix didn't go national, it had the potential to do so. John Fair, aka the future Andre the Giant, also helped with Grand Prix success. The promotion booked him in the match of the century against the fearsome Don Leo Jonathan. Paul helped the future eighth winner of the world perfect his act, telling him not to let opponents take him off his feet or slam him. A business disagreement led to the Vachans losing interest in the promotion, but they continued wrestling. Paul closed out his wrestling career in the WWF in a grand manner. When Vince McMahon learned the Butcher was going to get married, he invited him to tie the knot in the ring. Despite the couple breaking up shortly before the ceremony, Vince was committed to staging a wedding, and he brought in an actress to play the Butcher's bride-to-be. The wedding took place on the December 14, 1984 edition of the WWF's Tuesday Night Titans program. And if you've ever seen an episode of Titans, you know this would be no ordinary wedding. And it certainly wasn't. A food fight broke out during the reception, complete with wrestlers, midget Sky Lolo, managers, and even WWF kingpin Vince McMahon getting involved in the shenanigans. When it comes to real-life tough guys, few wrestlers can compare to Paul Mad Dog Vachon's real-life battles with cancer. According to historian Pat LaProd, Mad Dog survived a colon cancer in 1992 and a throat cancer in 2003. He and his longtime partner, Rebecca, enjoyed road trips and traveled to different wrestling events and to catch up with friends. In 2023, the butcher revealed he was now battling a brain tumor. Traveling the world and battling cancer. To all my family, friends, fans, foes, Bashan said, I want to tell everyone that my voice is given out, my memory is slowly leaving me, and I am now in the hospital having a tumor on my skull removed. The one thing I can do is read. I would love to read any stories, good or bad, that you may have. I will enjoy reading them, and it does bring back my memory. Thanks for the memories. Paul Vachon passed away on February 29, 2024, at age 86. What do you think of Paul Butcher Vachon's incredible life? Did you get to see him wrestle? Share your thoughts in the comment section, and let us know if there's any videos you'd like Wrestling's Greatest Moments to cover. In the meantime, hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, Follow us on X and Instagram and spread the good news about wrestling's greatest moments, the channel that celebrates the squared circle.